When firing pottery outdoors, there's a lot of key elements that you need to remember. There's the fuel, there's the weather and the relative humidity and the wind. There's all kinds of elements that come together to make a successful firing. But there's one thing that's often overlooked, one thing that can be very important to a successful firing, and that is this, just a broken old scrap of ceramic, something that we in the primitive pottery world refer to as a cover shirt. Today I'm talking about cover shirts, not just why they're important and how they're used, but also I'm gonna show you how to make your own cover shirts. So in the Southwest, in prehistoric kilns, it is common to find refired shirts in the mix. Shirts that were fired a second or third time in among all the stones and charcoal left over from the firing. This indicates that cover shirts were being used. Also, if we look at modern Pueblo pottery, we see them using bits of metal or buckets to cover the pottery, to separate the pottery from the fuel. This is just the modern equivalent of cover shirts. A cover shirt is nothing more than like a poor man's sagger. It's just a way to separate the pottery that's being fired from the fuel and all those gases and carbons that come with it so that the pottery comes out of the firing nice and clean and bright. Another good use for cover shirts besides separating the pottery from the fuel is protecting the pottery from that thermal shock. So there's three ways the pots get hot inside the fire. There's three methods of heat transfer in fire science. There's convection, conduction, and radiation. Convection is the main way those pots heat up. That is hot air moving around inside of there. And that's why we don't stack those shirts too tightly. But radiation is a huge one. The radiant heat from the flames hitting the pottery can be an incredible boost in temperature. In fact, it can be more than that clay can handle in some cases. And so the cover shirts can kind of deflect that radiant heat and allow the pots to not take on that brunt of radiant heat which can crack them. And so they're also a protection, especially for clays that might not be tempered quite as well. But that implies that the cover shirts have to be extremely well tempered because they have to stand up to that thermal shock and they have to stand up to repeated firings over and over and over again. So while I might use 20% temper in a particular clay when I'm making pottery, I might use something closer to 30% temper in that clay if I'm gonna be making cover shirts out of it. And that is because I want these cover shirts to last. I want them to stand up to repeated thermal shocks and firings over the course of several years. So to talk briefly about how I use cover shirts, I stack the pottery over the coals in the fire and then I loosely stack the cover shirts over the pottery to separate that pottery from the fuel. Now, I don't wanna stack it too tightly. If I stack those cover shirts too tightly, you're reducing the amount of oxygen that's able to get to those pots and the pots can still come out dark and carbon covered. So it's important to, as you stack those cover shirts over your pottery, to keep in mind air space and air circulation and not to seal it up too tightly. And of course, when you're done with the firing, you can just pull the cover shirts away and let them cool along with the pottery and keep them for next time because you can use these over and over again. Now, over the course of years and many firings, they'll start to crack and fall apart. And some of these are from cover shirts that I had a long time ago that used to be quite large and have over the years broken into smaller and smaller pieces. But I can still use this to cover a small pot, to cover a small gap between pots, those kind of things. So if you're firing pottery outdoors, it's easy to use a substitute, something that works just as good to keep the pottery and the fuel separated. Just like those Pueblo potters we talked about and those scraps of metal or old buckets that they use, I have this galvanized bucket. I have some holes drilled in it for oxygen, but you know what? Those aren't even necessary. My friend Ron Carlos, for example, fires with a big bucket and he never drills any holes for oxygen and his pots come out beautifully. So the holes I thought were important, but aren't. What's important is just to keep the fuel away from the pottery. And so this works really good if the pot is the right size. I also have an even bigger bucket that I use for even bigger pots. But if I'm trying to replicate pottery authentically, if I'm trying to do it the way the ancients would have done it, I use cover shirts. Now, if you think about the way the ancients lived, they lived in a world where they used pottery every day for all sorts of things, for storing, for moving water. And in their life using pottery every day, they probably broke a lot of pottery, which is why when we go to these prehistoric ruins, we find mountains of pottery shirts because they were breaking pots and replacing them constantly. So if you lived in that world and you were firing pottery, it would be easy to find some big chunks of broken shirts that you could use to protect the pottery from the fire. In our world, we make pottery and we put it on a shelf. It doesn't get used all the time. So we don't have a lot of broken pottery sitting around the way the ancients did. So I have to make these. I have to specifically, purposely make cover shirts, which the ancients would never have done or had any need to do. 
Now let's talk about how I make cover shirts. First of all, because I'm using these shirts over and over again in these outdoor firings, they have to be extremely resistant to thermal shock. And that means adding lots of temper or grog to that clay. So the first thing I do to get ready to make cover shirts is I get my clay ready by adding plenty of temper. In this case, this is a commercial clay that I purchased last year, and I'm just trying to use up the last of it. This is that Amico clay that they sell at Hobby Lobby as Moist Pottery Clay X15 or something like that. And so I'm gonna need a lot of sand into this clay to make sure that it's gonna withstand that thermal shock and that repeated use in outdoor firings. Once my clay is ready, I just have to roll out and pat out a slab. And I'll do something between patting and rolling, a little bit of patting, a little bit of rolling. I don't think it's rocket science. So once I get it rolled out, I'll kind of adjust the shape of it maybe to make sure that it's a usable shape. We don't want it to be a rectangle, okay? Because those corners aren't gonna help us. More of an oval is actually closer to what we want. Or even something like a kidney shape would be fine. Once we get the slab made the way we want it, we need to drape it over something because we want to give it this rounded shape that these cover shirts are. This allows us to stack them nicely around the pottery in the firing. A square flat slab would be much more difficult. In this case, I'm using this large metal bowl as my template for that rounded shape. And I'm covering the bowl with a piece of cotton cloth. This will just keep the clay from sticking to that bowl. And then I'm going to let it sit there and dry for a while. Now, you can't leave it sit there and dry for an extended period of time or it could crack and break as it shrinks around that bowl. So I'm gonna leave it sit here long enough to become firm and then I'm gonna flip it over carefully. You can see that I've arranged towels on the workbench here to hold it up because it's soft, it's still fragile and I don't want it to kind of slump and flatten out or crack as it dries. I'm gonna leave it sit here and dry some more this way. And in the meantime, I'm gonna work on some more cover shirts. So I'm gonna keep making cover shirts, putting them on the mold, letting them dry, moving them over here, making another cover shirt until I've used up the rest of this clay and have enough cover shirts. What I'm hoping to achieve today is to make enough of these cover shirts that I have enough to use in my student firings at my next workshop. My next workshop, by the way, is at Q Ranch on Labor Day weekend. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Q Ranch is a really great place and they feed us really well and it's a great environment to make pottery. And up at Q Ranch this summer, we're gonna be making replicas of ancient White Mountain Redware pottery. So that'll be a lot of fun. I'll put the link to that workshop down in the doobly-doo in case you're interested in joining us. For the record, I really don't like this clay. It's really firm to work with. So you have to have a lot of hand strength to shape it and to knead it. Watch how I flip this over. This is the trick. So with a lot of work, I got four nice big cover shirts made with the rest of that clay. So that worked out good and that sets me up real nice for that workshop this summer. Now, these are still damp and like any pottery, I'm gonna let these dry real slow so they don't crack. And then I'm not gonna fire them ahead of time. I'm going to go ahead and handle them gently and then use them as cover shirts in the first firing. And that way, they will function as cover shirts and come out of that firing completely fired. If you'd like to learn more about the use of cover shirts, you're going to want to check out that big trench kiln firing they did at the 2021 Southwest Kiln Conference in Blanding, Utah. It was a massive firing, and they used a pile of cover shirts in that. There's a video I made of that firing. I'm going to put it right over here. So go check that out. Watch how they used cover shirts in that video and get some ideas about how these are best used. All right? Thanks for coming with me today. I'll catch you next time. Oh,